Vice tambourine. That's right. On the back of you on that. Ooh. Hi, I'm Jules Brooks, Point Blank MD, and I've come down to Assault and Battery Studios today for a very special session. We've got some of our Point Blank students here. We're going to be filming Goldie as he records multiple drummers and percussionists for a new musical project that he's doing. Give me that rim on the edge. There you go. I've known Jules for a long time, like 25 years. I met him with Howie B. You know, I'm really happy with Point Blank, and especially with what you think about, when you think about Point Blank now, 20 years ago, a school like that would never exist. And that is a good, is, is a really strong thing. Now on the top end. Now on the top end, I can bring that in, fold it over. Crush so it like butter. I'll do a few individual hits. Yeah. Essentially, these sessions we're recording two drummers and a percussionist, and the the aim of it from the start was to be able to record all three musicians at the same time. Um, we didn't do that for the whole session. Sometimes we're recording one then another, but then today, on the second day, we've been focusing on trying to record everybody together. Uh -huh. And Goldie's been in here, kind of conducting, as it were, to try and get the grooves that he really wanted. Um, and I think really the idea is that w they're going to take away all this raw material and they're going to start forming it into the backbone of the new album. You know, I'm working with Burial, Flying Lotus, Fotec, D Bridge, uh, some great singers that are fan, Martina and Natalie Gouch, who was obviously at Point Blank and now teaching and stuff. Why don't we have one more pass with just the basic yeah. loop and that? Just yeah. really lightly like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. even on your pitch. Okay, here we go. That's nice. Yeah. A bit more back beat. Very good. Really, really help really yeah. that. It's going to solid solidify everything. Or lift it along. I think all we really need now, Hugh, really, is any Brazilian rhythm that you were thinking about yesterday. Yeah. And a single hit miscellaneous stuff, and we're done. Now, for the students, I think um, this is going to have been really useful, especially particularly the guys who were around yesterday, because yesterday was really frantic because we had to get the setup done at the start and then really sort of get to work. We did like about 20 different breakbeats yesterday. So we've been basically spectating the whole, you know, the whole session, soaking all this knowledge yeah. in. Communication was a big thing. I've not, like one thing I really noticed is as an audio engineer, if you're dealing with like a few musicians, you have to you have watch to, out for communication. Yeah, you have to have people skills. Like, like you got to make people feel at ease so that they, they, you bring out the best in them. Do we have a tempo? 160, 160? bring it on. Bring it on at 160, please. Because I was just playing at 155, but yeah. Alright, 160 it is. Cool, I'm ready when you are, guys. Nearly finish on. Simple stepping groove. Yes. Yeah, seems quite nice to just be done. Pace, 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 it done, nothing else. And nothing else. It's very different. It's actually very different to what we've done. Most of the things we've done. Yeah. yeah. 
Just, we're gonna we'll go to Thailand. And we'll just work all the album out. I yeah. just got to compress everything down to what I need to do. That's 14 shapes. So it's gonna be a two-year project. Don't want to go much faster. No. no. What's that? 170. All right, let's go. Okay, we're rolling. Definitely got his own way of working. Yeah. I mean, he's been doing this for a long time as well. The impression I get is the thing at the Royal Festival Hall with the, with the two drummers, the Timeless Live thing, has really sort of energised him and he really wants to bring some of those uh, ideas and ways of working into the music. He was talking yesterday saying that uh, 20 years ago we couldn't do this, you know, it, the, the guys at Metalheads and uh, our fellow sort of jungle and drum and bass artists, they wouldn't be able to afford to come to a studio like this and do stuff like this. Also the technology wouldn't have allowed them to do it because if they were recording onto tape, they're not going to be able to record onto tape and then, you know, manipulate everything really quickly. Everything would be so slow. But now we've been recording today, I'll export all the individual audio files and then the production team will just get to work straight away. this would have took months and months so yeah so I think for the students this has been a real eye-opener it was run really smoothly because everyone knew what they were doing and knew what they want especially him the client you know it was more relaxed than yeah. I thought it'd be yeah and definitely. I'm, I'm sure that's down to the people that are involved but it was nice seeing how ev like everyone tried to make it as fun as possible. It's a great opportunity, you know. Yeah. Maraca, you. Hey, like a maraca. You has a you maracas. Has got a pair of massive maracas. I've got yeah, tiny massive penis, pair. huge balls. Huge balls, tiny really penis. Helpful. It's important for students to see this type of activity because it gives them an insight into the real world of music production. We like to uh, connect the students with the industry. and We do that from connections we know, record companies, labels, publishing, and personal contacts with artists like Goldie. Cool. Like he said to, to us just now, he doesn't know much about music theory or whatever, he doesn't care, but he has the sound in his head and he, it, and I guess when you have that, it's easy to direct your musicians and even if you don't know how to play it, but if you get musicians to come in, you gotta know what you want. I think it's good for them to understand the train that they're getting on, you know what I mean, and and and, and what's what's historically beautiful about this music. I think that's what the new generation are lacking a little bit because it can kind of sound soulless a little bit, and, and it's not like it's music from the 70s and you're growing up and your dad listens to ABBA. It's electronic music which has spanned a, a big chunk of this new generation. You know what I mean? And uh, from the 90s to now, whether it's Porter's Head or Massive Attack and to Flying Lotus to Burial, to it's a really you know, electronic music has achieved what all the naysayers thought he couldn't.